again roots trunks division chords c5 to t1 we have trunks we have divisions and then finally we have the chords what happens now is interesting the most important thing about the brachial plexus is its roots uh, and the branches the chords in these don't matter coming to the branches of the brachial plexus this is an important thing as it is not easily rememberable but if you know mnemonics it is very easy so just write down as soon as you make this diagram you make l m l okay it's a stupid mnemonic l m l nothing of value we have then ulnar okay and then we have m for u m for u okay what is this stupid mnemonic here we have this by the way this up this chord it is called the lateral chord lateral chord the orange one it is called as like l l the orange one is called as the posterior chord and this one is called as the medial chord i'm going to explain in detail later so there is the lateral chord the posterior chord and the medial chord how do we label it as lateral posterior and medial so it's a very simple thing that there, so this is what this is the axillary artery the continuation of the subclavian artery the axillary artery is present in the axilla obviously and it is divided into three parts by a muscle this muscle is called the pectoralis minor muscle so the part of the axillary artery medial is the first part beneath is second part and lateral is the third part in relation to the pectoralis major muscle do you get it the pectoralis minor muscle goes over the axillary artery it is inserted into the coracoid process here the part of the axillary artery medial to the pectoralis minor muscle is the first part beneath is the second and the last is the third part the brachial plexus the brachial plexus as we have labeled in this fashion the lateral posterior and medial chord are actually the relations of the chords are actually the relations of the chord in the second part of the axillary artery you get it that means that this is going to be the lateral chord this is going to be the medial chord and beneath the axillary artery there is going to be the posterior chord do you get it the relations are not the same here these chords go like this so this becomes posterior and here it is the clavicle so this is the supraclavicular part here it will be the root trunks divisions chords will come here in the axilla the axilla will have in the second part of the axillary artery relation the chords of the brachial plexus let me clean the diagram a little bit okay so now that i have cleaned it up let me relabel it that is this is the lateral chord this is the posterior chord and this is the medial chord okay mnemonics fast everybody knows that this lateral starts with l so it is l m l this starts with l so this is m for u and the posterior which is not anything it is the ulnar okay we got it branches as the name suggest it will have three branches that is the l branch the m branch and again an l branch okay what are these branches first one we have we have the lateral pectoral nerve the lateral pectoral nerve is a branch of the lateral chord of brachial plexus it is the first branch and it will supply the pectoralis major muscle the pectoralis major muscle is a muscle over here which adducts the arm and the superior extremity that is the lateral pectoral nerve the m here is the musculocutaneous nerve the musculocutaneous as the name suggests like all nerves it is muscular and cutaneous that means the musculocutaneous nerve arises from here goes over here and it will supply the flexor group of the arm that is the coracobrachialis the biceps brachii and the brachialis muscle and it will supply the cutaneous part musculo and cutaneous part cutaneous part over the skin of the lateral side of the forearm so this part will be supplied by musculocutaneous and these muscles over here will be supplied by musculocutaneous what is the last l the last l is actually lateral root lateral root of median nerve we'll come to median nerve median nerve is a nerve which will supply the hand 
and the flexor muscles of the forearm but we'll come to this later we have the ulnar here remember that ulnar is a mnemonic but ulnar nerve is not a branch of the posterior cord let me repeat again ulnar is the mnemonic for posterior cord but ulnar is a is a branch of the medial cord we we write m for u here so this u is actually the ulnar nerve okay so we have from u we'll have a u branch we'll have an l branch and we'll have an n branch then we're going to have an a branch and an r branch so what is this u l n a r from u we have upper subscapular upper subscapular what do you mean by upper subscapular the upper subscapular the upper subscapular nerve is the nerve supply to the upper fibers of the subscapularis muscle which is present in the subscapular fossa of the scapula the l we have the lower subscapular nerve from the l part which is the supply to the lower part of the subscapularis muscle then we have n the n is nerve to latissimus dorsi nerve to ld nerve to latissimus dorsi so latissimus dorsi is a big group of uh, big big muscle present in the back it extends all the way from the iliac crest up to the humerus so that is the nerve to latissimus dorsi this is also called as thoraco dorsal thoraco dorsal nerve or nerve to latissimus dorsi it is the branch of the posterior cord okay then we have a a is the axillary nerve we are studying everything it is present in the axilla so this is the axillary nerve it is the major nerve supply to the deltoid muscle it is actually the sole nerve supply to the deltoid muscle the deltoid muscle is this round contoured muscle here it helps in the 90 degree abduction of the arm so here we have the axillary nerve and the last is the radial nerve so r is the radial nerve an important thing about the radial nerve radial nerve is the chief supply of every single extensor and the entire uh, extensor group as well as the skin present in the superior extremity so that is the radial nerve the radial nerve is the largest branch of the brachial plexus and it is also the thickest branch as it has to supply so many muscles over here we got that so let's revise again lateral cord it is lml l m l lateral pectoral uh, muscular cutaneous lateral root of median nerve posterior cord we have ulnar upper subscapular lower subscapular nerve to latissimus dorsi axillary nerve and then radial nerve coming to the last cord that is the medial cord the medial cord will have five branches m four times and u once you got that m for u okay what are the branches like we saw here there is a lateral pectoral nerve similarly there is a thing called as medial pectoral nerve just like the lateral pectoral nerve it will also supply the pectoral group of muscles but the key point over here is that the lateral pectoral nerve only supplies the pectoralis major muscle whereas the medial pectoral nerve also supplies the pectoralis minor muscle as well as the pectoralis major muscle so that was about the medial pectoral nerve then we have the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm it will supply over here this is a skin supply cutaneous means skin supply so we have medial cutaneous nerve of arm just like that we have medial cutaneous nerve of forearm okay then we have like i told you there is lateral root of median nerve there is also median root of median nerve and these two roots combine to form the median nerve okay so what was this this was the medial medial root of median nerve medial root of median nerve and lateral root of median nerve they combine to form the median nerve and the last one was u so u is this ulnar nerve i told you that ulnar is a mnemonic for posterior cord but ulnar nerve is present as a branch of the medial cord do you understand what i'm saying the ulnar nerve here that i have just drawn the ulnar nerve is a chief nerve supplier for the muscles of the hand okay so any fine tuning muscles it will it will come from the ulnar nerve okay so like we discussed this is how you draw the brachial plexus and we're going to talk about the root values right now so root values are things which are uh, you know 
दे आर द एक्चुअल प्लेसेज फ्रॉम वेर द नर्व फाइबर्स ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर नर्व आर कमिंग वे आर फाउंड आउट द रूट वैल्यू बिकॉज इफ देर इज अ डैमेज टू अ पर्टिकुलर रूट दैट रूट सीजेस टू फंक्शन एंड हेंस द पर्टिकुलर मसल्स आर अफेक्टेड सो फ्रॉम दर इनोवेशन वी कैन को रिलेट द डैमेज एंड देन फाइंड आउट द रूट वैल्यू ऑफ द नर्व सो दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द एक्सल आर्टरी बाय द वे एंड ओके सो द लैटरल कॉर्ड हियर द लैटरल कॉर्ड रिमेंबर दैट all the nerves the lml of the lateral cord l m n l of the lateral cord will have the root value of c5 c6 and c7 that is these three segments so c5 comes from c5 c6 comes from c6 and c7 comes via this root so from here it goes like this to the lateral cord so we have c5 c6 c7 as the root value for l m l of the lateral cord coming to the medial cord here medial cord the all the nerves of the medial cord will have c8 t1 root value Now, an interesting thing to note here. This is probably the most im- interesting thing about the brachial plexus is that the ulnar nerve, which is a branch of the medial cord, this is the medial cord of the brachial plexus, will have root value C7, C8, and T1. So, where does this C7 come from? We can know. We cannot trace the C7 here. We are seeing that C8 and T1, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming, and they are going. There is no other place for the C7 fibers. to reach the ulnar nerve so theory has been postulated that c7 fibers run via here through the uh, sorry c7 fibers run via here so c7 fibers run from here go here in the lateral cord by the lateral root of the median nerve turn go from the medial to the medial root of median nerve and finally and the in the ulnar nerve so the c7 fibers also reach the ulnar nerve but by a long course through the medial root of the median nerve and the lateral root of the median nerve so that was it that the ulnar nerve which is a branch of the medial cord of the brachial plexus has root value c7 c8 and t1 whereas all the other nerves of the medial cord have root values c8 and t1 C7 root value is very important. That it is one of the most important roots innervating the hand, and ulnar nerve is the primary innervator of the hand. Then we have the radial nerve, the median nerve, and the thoracodorsal. Before that, let's go to the posterior cord. This cord, the posterior cord, all of the all of the nerves of the posterior cord will have root value C5 and C6. So axillary C5, C6, upper and lower subscapular C5, C6. but there are two exceptions here is that the radial nerve and the nerve to latissimus dorsi which is also known as thoracodorsal nerve will have different root values the radial nerve will have the root value of all the brachial plexus that means c5 to t1 all of them come to the radial nerve so radial nerve is having root value of c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 thoracodorsal nerve thoracodorsal is nerve or nerve to latissimus dorsi it is an additional root value of c6 it is going to be hard to remember this because logic does not apply here c6 c7 c8 of the thoracodorsal nerve nerve to nerve to latissimus dorsi okay we have the median nerve median nerve as you can see it is from formed from the lateral cord as well as the medial cord so lateral cord has c5 c6 c7 medial cord has c8 t1 so medial median nerve will also have all the roots of the brachial plexus but in comparison of radial to median nerve the size of the radial nerve is greater it is that it has to supply entire extensor group of the superior extremity so that was all about the brachial plexus the applied parts will discuss in the next video thank you